everyone and welcome to this first part of a very special trip I want to take you on with me. A trip to New Orleans, to Saturnalia LARP that is happening this November in New Orleans, organized by By Night Studios and Reverie Studios. I was invited to participate in this LARP and I haven't ever participated in any LARP before. This is actually going to be my first custom character creation for a LARP like this, so I am very much excited to start this trip by making my character and showcase to you how exactly it will work. I am not the first one to participate in the character creation there, so some options will probably be taken already, but that's fine. I'm very happy to, you know, find something that will fit me from the remaining options. And additionally, I also have only the basic ticket, like uh, most of the people who will attend Saturnalia, so I might not have access to some very special options, but we will explore them, see what's there, and uh, yeah, hopefully settle on something super interesting. Let's begin. I'm going to uh, click here on the Saturnalia in the Reverie app that uh, has uh, all of the LARPs that Reverie is uh, organizing and you can pick the one that you participate in and uh, after you have a ticket you can create a character in here. Uh, you can browse the character options, already made ones. I'm actually more tempted to create my own, so I'm going to go with create my character. Let's do this. You create your own character by making choices in the character creation system. You can explore the different options by clicking a browse character options. Once you're ready and the system is open, you can create your character and make your final choices by clicking create my character. Details of your character are largely up to you. The designer allows you to layer more information on top of what you, de what you design here. Elements such as your character's history, their gender, their name, their relationship to other characters, etc. are all intended to be for you to design based off of your choices in the system. Interesting. Alright. We can get uh, more information. Some important notes to keep in mind. The LARP has been designed so that every single character has the same access to the core experience. There are no privileged characters, and in Saturnalia's theme, even low-status characters are important, as age and title dissolve for this experience, which is great. I do not want to be any character in power. I really want to play this like low-key kind of a character. If you see a red X, that means you don't have the ticket tier for that item, and if you see a green check mark, you do. A green lock means an item has availability. A yellow lock means someone is looking at that item in the system and has it checked out. You can put yourself in the queue for that item, and if it is released, you can select it. A red lock means it is fully checked out by someone else. The heart icon lets you favorite something you're interested in. During the browsing period prior to the character creator being opened to full characters, this lets you select options to remember for later. I actually haven't done that, so this is going to be all new to me. Uh, Alright, we I think we have everything checked. So let's go towards the introduction. And here we do pick the background for the character. And starting with the hunter, we do not have access to this as you can see, so this is for higher ticket tier owners. And uh, it's good because I do not want to play as a hunter, I want to be a vampire! And there's also a werewolf option, so there will be some werewolves involved, which makes me very scared because again I'm going to be a vampire. And there's a decision in between a local and the visitor. I'm actually going to go with the visitor simply because I have no idea about New Orleans except for what I've read and of course, you know, seen the documentaries, seen the media set in New Orleans, of course, being the vampire capital. Uh, but uh, I do not feel strong enough to play a local character just because this is going to be, you know, a completely new experience to me visiting the place. So a visitor, definitely that's going to be easier for me to roleplay someone who has no idea about the city. Anarchs! Okay, so we can't pick a Shira because that's also locked for higher tickets uh, members. And then we have Camarilla and Mix and Unaligned. So Mix is a mix of different sects. That's something that I'm tempted to take. I'm not sure if I'm going to go for a specific faction just yet. But let's see the options. Like, What do we have in the Anarchs? We have Gods of Gore. Oh, that's, these are very long um, 
descriptions. I'm not going to read them in full, but I'm going to give you a very brief overview on each of them. So that is uh, what used to be a Nomadic Sabbath pack that turned out to be Anarchs in the end. I mean, of course, in the modern uh, Vampire the Masquerade, Sabbath has been majorly pushed away from the power in majority of the domains. So we are, of course, living in the era where Second Inquisition is, uh, you know, like everywhere. And they knew about the existence of vampires. So being a part of the Sabbath is very, very risky. And uh, only the, those the, that are completely brainwashed by the uh, Sabbats, um, different paths of the Sabbats are willing to still continue to be on these paths. Some did diverge to Camarilla or to Anarchs, and uh, Gods of Gore are the ones that diverge to Anarchs. So that's interesting, definitely something pretty cool. We have the Enforcers, um, which I do believe. Where are they? <laughs> you want to take a breather from the road. You've been going non-stop and the last few jobs have left you with some scars. Okay, so these are the mercenaries, are they? The two. You have friendly relationships with many who are aware of your reliable services. Let me check out very quickly of the services. In question, the founder of the Enforcers, known for their investigative skills, was called to look into the disappearance by a vampire acquaintance with ties to the family. What followed was a spiral of intrigue, and the founder put together a group to get to the center. A conspiracy with roots all across the country, a cult, mass murder, occult programming, and even a sorcerer were all found in the process. And at the end, the Enforcers came out with an unbreakable bond to one another. Ah, oh, I see, so that's like a cutlery. That's why the cutlery ticket here... Uh, it's because if you are going together with your friends with a cutlery ticket, you can actually play this pre-made cutlery. Interesting. The Lost and Damned. You desperately need it all to mean something. The Embrace turned your existence into a more than tragedy and you're trying to find a way out. Isn't that very... Um, <laughs> very proper. Actually, I, I would be tempted to take this one because that's some kind of a character which I very much vibe with personally. Uh, let me just very quickly glance in here. If you want to read more, you can, I, you can pause uh, the video and check out more of this uh, one. I'm just going to glance at it because I don't want to get tied to a specific option before something like immediately speaks to me. Uh, you're not kidding when you worry about the acts that you have perpetrated and their cost to your soul. Your gothic morbidity has made you easy prey for the beast and you have made more mistakes than most. Oh, I love this character type. Ah, tempted, tempted. And we also have the traveling performers. Uh, I see that, uh, I think the name is self-explanatory in here. The cultural development, of course. It's a group that has died and been reborn over and over, often for a surviving member rekindling it again with new purpose. Nice. So, oh, the, the performance briefly doubled with Satanism. It tainted the group's reputation, and you've had to explain away the flirtation as a misunderstanding. Some kindred can get so uptight about what they call infernalism. <laughs> I see. So for those people who might have had tied to some infernally concepts, uh, that could be something interesting to you. Uh, I am going to check out the Camarilla very quickly. Um, can I just uh, visitor? Go back. Here we go. Visitor. Next. And we have Camarilla. I want to very quickly glance at the options in here. Sanguine sanitation. Your prints made it look simple, clean, but you know better. You recognize a job well done when you see it. In fact, you are the job. You're the unsung heroes. With fingers in every part of the city, you're the cleanup crew with the direct line to the powers that be. When they ask for something, you're the ones who make it happen. Ooh, I see. And then we have the assembly of princes. So you can actually play a prince who has uh, come to Saturnalia from a different domain, which is also pretty nice, and the Crimson Faithful, which I've read about this one before. Yes, so this is the kind of like a Cult of the Blood Gats inspired group. You have ties to some kind of a cult and, cult, and you pick which one, which is interesting, but I am the most interested in the mixed group, because I want to mingle with all of the potential... Um... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I actually went went uh, too far back. Let me just create my character. Uh, visitor. Yes, we're going to go back. And we're going to go for the mix. Let's check it out. 
Risk Takers and Heartbreakers. The official group name is the Axis of Awesome, which someone in Blood Induced Haze came up with in 2002. Before that, it was the Party Brigade. Before that, it was something equally contextually appropriate and aggrandizing. I haven't known this word before. But the last time at Saturnalia, someone called you Risk Takers and Heartbreakers, which you thought was pretty great and are looking to officially adopt when you get around to calling your Camarilla publicists. You're a group of high-profile vampires who take great delight in being publicly known in both mortal and vampire society. You are larger than life, cultivate a massive following, and love to delight those followers with your antics. The heartbreakers leave pockets of fans, lovers, and enemies in your wake, but you don't really pay them much attention on their quest to remain at the top. I see. And the goal is use your mutual star power to make this the most epic Saturnalia to remember and make sure the world knows about it. Hide obvious masquerade breaches since you're not an idiot, but everything else is fair game. Be there, be visible, and make sure you're the epitome of Saturnalia. Beautiful, completely not my style. <laughs> I think I wouldn't be playing this character. I mean, I could in play by post, maybe, like if I could um, do it via text or maybe on a call or, you know, at the table. But in real life, um, I actually, I, maybe it's not visible online, but I am quite of an introvert and I am, I, I am very low key <laughs> in person. So I would find it super hard to break out of my shell and play someone who attracts this much attention. So I'm definitely looking for more of the ops of a kind of a character, especially because this is one of my first LARPs. Um, actually, physically it's going to be the second, as I'm also going to the night in question, but uh, I haven't been LARPing Vampire the Masquerade before, so it's going to be still new to me, and I want to not take that many risks, as the risk takers would. Um, so there are also the Grave Seekers, which I do not have the access for. They are... Uh, Hmm, let me see. Your vampiric nature, your allegiances give you enough to do every night and you never have to think about what it all means. Never ever. Or perhaps you're a ghoul and have to serve the ideologies of the undead without ever really being part of them. Do you still believe? Is it enough to give meaning to your existence? Your society of like-minded individuals is older than any member. You're an informal group of kindred whose goal has been to seek after lost and forbidden knowledge and understand why you're here and what the purpose of the vampire is. The religious among you have sometimes phrased the question as what is the role of the vampire in God's creation? That's interesting. Uh, we don't uh, have access to this one, so I'm going to check out the last one here, the Historical Society. The Historical Society picks a city to host their annual meeting every year. It usually takes place in old cities with rich histories like Athens, Beirut, Varanasi, Prague, Istanbul and Beijing. And while New Orleans started as an unconventional suggestion, the more you thought about it, the more you realized it checked the boxes. Distinct culture, fascinating history, and the birthplace of civilizing innovation. In this case, jazz. Once rumors circulated that this might be the last Saturnalia, you agreed the Big Easy was the place to be. The Historical Society has held an annual meeting since the late 1970s, when any location in the world became no farther than a plane ride away. The founders were a trio of independent kindred who enjoyed each other's company as much as they enjoyed history. Eventually, they welcomed more members to the society, growing steadily through invitation only. Sect affiliation, or lack thereof, is no barrier to entry. A member must only abide by the historical society's requirements. A member must be an expert in a niche aspect of historical study. A member must be invited by the founders. A member must leave their politics out of the society. A member must leave their faith out of the society. Oh, I see. So that's like cult free, faction free. You wouldn't go as far as to say the historical society is a conspiracy or a cult. However, you can deny that having an open channel of communication to members of various sects and faiths has been helpful on occasion. But as far as anyone else is concerned, you're just a group of like-minded historians who enjoy traveling to exciting cities. Like a book club. Yes, like a book club. This speaks to me. <laughs> this is like, I used to really, really love Beckett. <laughs> the first thing I went into Vampire the Masquerade with was my love to Beckett as a character, so definitely something I'm interested in. The annual meeting is an open invitation to all Historical Society members, because attendance is voluntary, based on who has an interest and means to make the trip. The mix of kindred is constantly changing, and you're curious to see who shows up. Controversy. You are absolutely members of the secret society who hide in the open. Great. 
The annual meeting isn't a meeting at all. It's the opposite. It's a public field trip members take to prove everyone else that you're just a bunch of history nerds taking in the sights and sounds of intriguing cities with some like-minded friends. Of course, no sus stuff in there. You've come to New Orleans to have fun, catch up with other historical site members and prove how not secret you are while keeping an eye out for potential new members. Plus, you get to participate in an ancient Roman festival. By throwing yourself into the event, you can feel what the original Saturnalia festivals might have been like while taking in the culture and history of the Paris of the South. Actions. Avoid conducting any official historical society business. Yeah, I don't want to do any official business there. If you stumble upon anyone having a meeting, break it up. Prove to the group prove the group has nothing to hide by investing in the festival. Learn something about your niche that's distinct to New Orleans. Walk around, explore, and take in the culture of the city. Talk with others and suss out if there is anyone in the city who might make an excellent future member for the society. I am decided. This is definitely my type of a character. <laughs> and some of them are already taken, so I have to be quick. 3 hour tour. You prefer to spend your time on a boat sailing the high seas. Technically, you're an underwater archaeologist who investigates shipwrecks and sunken remains. In actuality, you're a treasure hunter who dives to find sunken riches. Oh, that's super cool. Devotee of Beckett, that one is taken, of course. Like covered Beckett, you're a nodist who wanders the globe exploring kindred lore and mythology. You're driven to discover the true history of Cain and the, and to, and, and the antediluvians of Enoch. Dusty Toms, you love the smell of paper and writing by hand. You're a researcher and rare book collector who enjoys spending time in the library stacks, trading with dealers and investigating the origins of literature. I see that. Uh, the Artifact Hunter, as an archaeologist, you travel the world hunting down valuable relics and artifacts. You have an impressive collection of your own, but you profit most from finding objects older kindred have lost in the passing centuries of their own lives. Nice. The creator, you are a collector and creator of intriguing things. Maybe that is art or relics. Perhaps you prefer the eclectic surprises in the cabinet of curiosities. Sometimes you patron mortal creations, but you prefer to invest in the macabre artifacts of vampires. That's, that's, that's interesting. I, I'm into that. The dramaturge. You study plays, playwrights, and the history of theatre. Perhaps you're interested in classics like Euripides, Shakespeare, and Moliere. Um, or maybe you prefer more modern playwrights like Oscar Wilde, Henrik Ibsen, and August Wilson. Hmm? That could be interesting as well. The guidebook. If anyone is in charge of the itinerary, it's you. Before traveling to any city, you research to find the most inspiring or engaging locations. You often plan outings and give tours based on what you've learned about places and their histories. This is me in real life, so I think it would be too close <laughs> to, to who, who I am. <laughs> but whenever I go anywhere... Oh, I just bumped my, my on the table. Whenever I go uh, anywhere, I'm just always the person who like reads about everything and tries to enjoy what I've learned during the trip. The media buff. What began as a pastime like being a movie buff or audiophile became a passion. Now you're an archivist specializing in the research, collection, and preservation of media. You work with different film types, tapes, photographs, documents, and albums to restore them, authenticate them, and investigate potential forgeries. That's interesting. We have the urban folklorist. You said the urban myths, supernatural folklore, and local legends. That's lovely. I would probably take that if that wouldn't be taken already, but I'm going to go with another one. And Vintage Fashionista, you, your garment collection doesn't need its own closet, it needs its own haven. You're obsessed with the fashion of different eras and love to wear the clothes of your favorite time periods. This is great, but also doesn't fit my wardrobe. <laughs> I need to go with... Uh, I mean, I could... I'm probably going to get a special outfit specifically for this... Uh, for this uh, trip, but uh, yeah, this yeah, I'm, I'm not very much of a vintage wearer, so I guess I'm going to actually go with the curator. I love this one. I am an ex-art student. I finished art studies, and uh, I am very much into the cabinets of curiosities, the, the art, the relics, you know, and if I would be a vampire and I could afford it, I would definitely just go around and try to get the best collection possible. So yes, I love this one. I'm going to go further, pick this one. <gasps> the clown. Oh no, I don't know. I don't know. We have to decide. Okay. 
Riven by internal schism, modern ancient, the Banner Hakim, we don't have to read about the clans. I feel like if you don't know about these clans, I really recommend to go to worldofdarkness.com, check out the clan section. You can also take the clan quiz in order to determine which clan you are. And I am going to decide who I am going to play. We have a ghoul, which is also an interesting option. Um, we have a La Sombra who is... Uh, oh, it's actually unlocked for me. That's nice. Um, ministry is locked for me. No, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, ministry is my one of my favorite clans, but not probably a clan that I would like to play in this LARP. Ravnos is locked as well. Ravnos was something I was actively considering. So this is the clan that... Wait, is it unlocked for me? You can claim this item, can I? Oh, it's because... Uh, I see. So it, it wasn't claimed just yet. So there is a limited number of Ravnos, but... Uh, Oh, and Finblood that is locked as well. Damn. Do I play a Toreader? I mean, that would fit, actually, uh, being the Crater. Let me think very quickly. Tsimitsi would fit the Crater so well, but that one is also locked. So it's not... Uh, it's only for the special tickets. Hmm. I'm wondering what would fit specifically. Okay, we have a Tremere of House Karna and Tremere of the Pyramid. I mean, Tremere would also fit the creator uh, who is basically just trying to collect all of this all because of the being driven of their curiosity and perfectionism and trying to perfect the um, uh, the, the, the absolute best sort of a collection. And maybe, maybe this collection could be something that would help them in the blood sorcery rituals as well. Um, do I pick Tremere, actually? That would be interesting. Independence from the pyramid has been achieved. Now what? Some among House Karna argue that the traditional Tremere must be driven from the domain, too dangerous to be allowed to live. Others feel that such attitudes are exactly the kind of thing that made the clan so stifling to begin with. No point in replacing tyranny with new tyranny. Actions. Find inspiration for ritual magic in an unlikely place or an unlikely person. Or an unlikely item, am I right? Invent a new blood magic ritual with others, sorcerers or perhaps proponents of the many kindred faiths. Try to steer House Karna either into the Camarilla or the Anox. Come up with arguments as to why. I don't want to get too political. If, if being a Tremere, if one of the actions, I guess these are like probably just proposed actions, not something I have to do. But uh, my deal, like that's like I was aiming for Ravnos. I was hoping I could maybe snatch Ravnos in there because I wanted to be a little bit more of an outsider. Um, maybe Caitiff could be, actually. I, I never played Caitiff in my life, so that would be interesting. What about the Pyramid ones? Two arguments have been advanced among local Pyramid Tremere. The clan should hold onto its traditional unity and brook no challenges to it. All deviant thinking must be punished by exile or death. Not my style. Not my style. I'm sorry, Pyramid Tremere. I am definitely, like, if there will be uh, Ipsissimus, I guess, you know, but that they are uh, specifically tied to Anarch, and here we are more of a mix. So, hmm. What about Toriador and their actions on the event? Uh, the trouble is that beauty is subjective. Each sire has chosen to embrace according to their own aesthetic ideas. If you're a Toriador, your sire probably felt strongly about you. Some Toriador openly challenged the clan's cult of appearance, arguing that it's ridiculous to limit on trying to capture the entire breath of the human and inhuman experience. Then again, those sort of controversies are the kind of debate many in the clan relish. Spend time with groups you wouldn't be caught alive with. Find yourself mesmerized by something that would normally bring you disgust. Trade in your cultured behavior for boorishness and acting like the common riffraff. Love this. I am tempted to go Toriador. Um, I might actually. Let me see what do we have. I mean, Nos, Nos is a clan that I would definitely pick. It's just that I am... I, I am just trying to be realistic here. I'm traveling from the other side of the world. I will be extremely tired and I will probably not have that much time to do makeup and you know, prepare the whole thing on my face. And for Nosferatu, I would love to step up my, step up my game and try to really uglyfy myself. So, um, you remember the makeup I, uh, if you've watched my Nosferatu clan video on my YouTube channel, I was, you know, trying my best to exaggerate the ugly parts of my face in order to do that. And I'm not sure if I would be able to, to do this uh, so far away from home without uh, my, you know, regular makeup setup and stuff. So, yeah, for Nosferatu, I'm tempted, but I'm a little bit afraid of my uh, of my makeup skills so far away and with limited palettes. So, 
Uh, Malkavians, no, I'm not feeling Malkavian really. Um, I could have actually, I could have maybe. Ma, ma, ma. B -b 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 -bum. No, I don't feel Malkavian. <laughs> let, me, let me go further. Maybe Hecata. The business bandit, but the nation necromancers of the Giovanni are the most powerful internal faction in the Hecata. But New Orleans is unquestionably the re realm of the Samadhi, a less organized, more occult bloodline. These differences may be invisible to outsiders, but are very obvious to those in the family. Okay, so yeah, I feel like being a Hecata in New Orleans, I know I'm a visitor, but it's kind of like, I feel like majority of the Hecata might be connected to Samadhi in some way. And just because of me being very much a visitor to the place, but also to the culture that surrounds Samadhi, I am not sure if I would be able to roleplay this, um, you know, sensitively enough and well enough. So I'm not really sure about picking Hekata Samadhi specifically, maybe regular Hekata, but I'm more tempted by a Torator right now. <laughs> Kative is unlocked and I could technically pick, play a Kative. Kedif have always caused discomfort among other vampires, particularly because they are regarded as a sign of end times or abominations of the blood. As outsiders, they've struggled to be respected and included. But things are changing quickly in the vampire society, and maybe there is a place for Kedif that isn't on the outside looking in. Demonstrate your value to those around you and showcase that you have been underestimated in every capacity. You deserve the place at the table. Revel in the joy of Saturnalia and lift up others that are low to places of esteem. Grow the notion that you roar mightily rather than shrink away from the future to come. Connect with other Kative and even the Finnbloods. I love this. I love Finnbloods. They are they are babies. They love Bruja. Bruja Collecta. I mean, that could work actually. That does could. I am tempted in between Kative and a Toriator so badly. I am tempted. Toriator would fit. Um. And it's just like, it, it's, I feel like it will be very, very easy to roleplay someone who does get obsessed over these like things that they could collect. While Kative, for Kative, it will be a little bit more of a being torn in between the idea of being a Kative and focusing more on trying to uplift others and myself in the vampiric society. While for Torator, I think it all just fits together very well. So I'm going to actually go with Torator. It could be a very obvious choice for a creator. And um, I, I feel like I could, you know, with the higher ticket, I could opt for Ravnus or Tsumitsi in here, which will be interesting. But I feel like Torator is going to be great for this one. And yeah, let's go with Torator. All right, uh, Ancile, Neonate. I do want to be a Neonate, I feel. Like, the bulk of the vampire population and the sign of the times, Neonates range from those that could still be alive as mortals, albeit incredibly old, to very recent. Ranging the gamut of generations, the Neonate is new and connected to the modern world in a way that Ancile or Elders are not. I do feel like Neonate. I like playing younger vampires. I did play... Uh, an elder once and uh, an unsteal a couple of times, which is always an interesting thing, but you always have to really get out of your comfort zone of who you are and who you represent with yourself, of what is your connection to technology and the things around you. So being a neonate is like, you can very easily tap into it if you are a person my age. Not an Ancilla yet, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think neonate is going to be an easy peasy choice in here. All right. And the disciplines, the powers that a vampire has. Each clan has a range of disciplines and you select from them a number of times based on age. Ghouls receive one pick, neonates two picks, ancillae three picks, and the elders receive four picks. If you are a ghoul or kative, you have picks from a larger group of disciplines. If you are thin blooded, you only have blood alchemy to pick from. Uh, definitely all specs, that's absolutely something that I should go with. Um, Toriator, non elder all specs, you really, really want to tell me what you're feeling. Ah, uh, okay. You really will really want to tell me what you hate the most. Okay, so these are the the things that I could do with that. That's interesting. Can I go back to okay, neonates? I, I wanna see the other options. Celerity. What do we have in here? Plus one combat token, retrieve an extra combat token. I am not going to be a combat driven character. If they were going to force me into combat, I better just, you know. Uh, you really, really believe everything I say. You really, really want to please me. <laughs> All right, let's go with this one. This is fun. For a creator, I don't think I'm going to be the one that tries to 
um, tries to like woo others into believing what I say, I'll be more like, I see that you have something very interesting in your back. Can I see that? <laughs> so yeah, let's go with this one. You really, really want to please me and let's go with all specs. And um, you really, really want to tell me what you're feeling. I would love to do the opposite of this one. You really, really want to tell me what you love the most. I want to be convinced into something that someone else finds beautiful. But uh, if that's not the thing, I'm going to go with this one. And that looks good. Worldview Faith. I am not exactly into finding myself... Uh, I mean, the Ash Finders are freaking cool. <laughs> I love the ash finders. Um, and then the film. Oh dear, they could actually fit in here. Wouldn't they? So these are, if you want to read more about these, Cults of the Glo Blood... Cults of the Blood Gods. Cults of the Blood Gods is the book to check. Um, it's a great book about various vampiric cults. And uh, yeah, I, I recommend to check it out. I'm going to read about those that interest me right now and see which one to pick. So... Human worldview. Your worldview falls within typical human norms. This may be because you're an ordinary mortal, or a ghoul, a vampire, or a similar supernatural creature who hasn't let go of your human understanding of the world. This is interesting. Our mortals and supernatural creatures can maintain a human worldview. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay, I could expand my horizons. That is interesting. I think I am tempted to take that. What about the Nephilim? You commit to enhancing the visual beauty of your surroundings in obedient service to the Nephilim, the children of the Archangel Michael the Toreador. As a devotee to aesthetics, you transform yourself and others into their most alluring selves. You lift others to new heights so they can shun ugliness and purge what is hideous in the fires of daylight. Some might say the children of the angel worship at the altar of vanity. Of course, such lazy pedestrian commentary comes from the jealous and unsightly. And honestly, if you cared, you might feel sorry for them, but you have no time for those who lack any inclination to improve themselves. Kindred can be so, so short-sighted. Perhaps it's the nature of their stagnant state of being. Their imaginations have atrophied, and thus they cannot see the dream. But you must show them the way so the creations of the Nephilim are not destroyed, especially when you have sacrificed so much to protect beauty from desecration. This fits, okay? I'm just, hmm, the children of the angel, uh, the children of the angel are one of the most open and prevalent kindred religions. The glut of followers are Torader, but Nosferatu also make up a sizable portion of the cult in their attempt to slough off their curse. Other clans, ghouls, and mortals can join, but other members are few. And the film conviction demands you reinvent yourself, reinvent yourself for every audience. Ternalia seems like the perfect knight to do just that. Do I want to be more of a of an evil evil Nephilim kind of a vampire or more of a human worldview kind of a vampire? The creator thing fits in here, like trying to take possession of all of these items in order to protect them from becoming ugly, from turning into dust into the hands of those unworthy of wielding them. And I feel like this would really fit. <laughs> What? I mean, Ashfinders are amazing. If I would play a Finblood, I would so go for the Ashfinders there. The vast majority of Ashfinders are dustborn, and occasional full-blooded cultists will stick around if they have an ulterior motive. Still, most leave because Ash does not affect non-dustborn, making it difficult for them to reach the same heights of enlightenment. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't make really sense for me to, to go for the Ashfinders. So, let me be... I kind of like, I like the uplifting part. I, I could be more of an uplifting in the film member who tries to get the most beauty from others and try to really, but then again, hmm, being so focused on the items at hand and the things I can collect, the art I can collect. Uh, wouldn't human worldview be a little bit more fitting here? You know what? I like the thing about human worldview, which says that you you are going to Saturnalia in order to learn new things and to expand your horizons. And maybe someone will convince my character to join one of these cults during it. I'm still a neonate. I haven't seen it all. I am very much, you know, I have a tunnel vision on my task on finding this most beautiful artifacts I can find, this mu most beautiful, weird things that the world has to offer. And uh, I basically overlooked... You're looking for the greater thing up there. So maybe 
someone on the Saturnalia is going to convince me to their worldview. So let's go with human. I feel like this fits, and as a neonate, I am still very much like, I, I don't really know what's going on, so they can teach me. Why be responsible when you can just pretend consequences don't happen? <laughs> disappoint everyone. You feel such a pressure from your peers. You feel the urge to disappoint absolutely everyone. Drink blood. Vampire blood is a drug. You want to taste it. All the different kinds. New types. So appealing. Oh, the blood leech kind of a thing. That would be interesting. You want to fall in love. Can in your shriveled heart still feel love? What if it's someone you really shouldn't fall for? Ha! <laughs> nice. You want to get religious. Interesting. See everything. You want to see everything there is to see. Yes! All the places where people get together, all the rituals, everything that happens, you must be the, that. Yes. Yes. This one. The curator just fits this one. Um, there's also the regular. Um, oh, there, oh, this is nothing. This is new thing. So relationship to Sternalia. Been once or twice. First time, heard about it a lot. The organizer, the regular, the return, the super fan. Uh, first time, heard about it a lot. Perfect. Party history. An event that has happened to the character in the past, shared by other characters. Most of these are related to Saturnalia or New Orleans. Eternal love. You were at the festival, undead or mortal, and late at night you glimpsed them and they were perfect. So striking, alluring, confident, magical, and you fell in love. You tried to catch another glimpse, but they were gone. The memory haunts you every time you go to another festival, you secretly hope that they are there too, and you could finally speak to them and get to know them and spend the rest of your existence with them. Do you believe you can really have a chance with your crush? Is your crush a specific player character or a type of a person you'll find at the LARP? If a player character, it's a good idea to talk the connection over with the player in advance to check if they're okay with it. Fear of missing out. You've missed out. Perhaps you've bailed on a party that later turned out to have been awesome. Maybe you've worked too much, missing out all on the fun people are having. Whatever the case, you're determined that this time you'll be right there in the midst of things. You remember a specific incident, a time when you were on the outside looking in. And what's worse, it wasn't because anyone kept you from attending. You were just too shy, busy, or otherwise talked yourself into not being there. That was a grievous mistake. How far will you go to avoid feeling like you missed out on something transformative? What will you discover about yourself in Saturnalia that brings you meaning and satisfy a satisfies a long buried urge? Love this. This is so good. This speaks to me. Had it once and lost it. Once you were a legend, you exalted in pleasures of experience and through historic parties. Mm, yeah, I, I see where this is going and nah. Making friends. Mm. Interesting repressed desire. Always lurking on the edge of your consciousness is a repressed desire. You keep yourself buttoned up, or that part of yourself mysteriously guarded, but it has a powerful hold on you. You've been planning on releasing that part uh, of you at the Saturnalia. Mm, like a desire for vampire blood? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, okay, we, have, we had a bad trip at the party. Maybe we drank some bad blood. You had a reaction. Oh, and the beast alert out of control. I see. Um, cultist, a great regret. It was the party that you had an encounter that you still think about. It left you with a bad taste in your mouth, and you haven't been able to shake the experience. You wish you could change something about it, but it has left its impact on your nightly existence. You didn't even know who they were, you were at the music festival and decided to take a break from the band, sitting down the grass. You got to talking with a bunch of strangers, and five hours later you were still there, deeply engrossed with a discussion of philosophy, different worldviews, music. It felt so profound. You wish you remembered what you talked about, but you were high. There, you remember the moment, though, and you wish you could experience it again. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I recall probably having some of these when I was young and beautiful. Back in 60 days, 60 years ago, <laughs> 60 days ago, 60 years ago, I am going to go with uh, fear of missing out. It's, I think it fits the character in general. Ooh, transformation. The essential transformation the character is looking for in Saturnalia can be personal, communal, political, religious, allegiance, ambition, faith, friends, gender identity, ideology. Morality, social lore, ro role, society, temperament. Um, okay, so we want to. This is interesting. I like the the whole transformative thing. So we want to um, change our temperament, be 
uh, change the society around us, which is very, very difficult to do, but I applaud this. You've always been the leader, the junior, the clown, the problem solver in your social group. You're tired of it and feel things must change. If you're a leader, you've had enough of responsibility. If you're a follower, it's said it's time for others to follow. I like this. I think this fits the previous one, the fear of missing out. I was always the shy one that stood out, but now I want to... Be, like, I, I think this actually fits so well, because like, I'm thinking about the backstory of this character as I'm making this, and I imagine a neonate, a Torreader neonate, who was always in the shadow of their sire, and there was always, like, the sire was someone that was actually prominent, had way more achievements and uh, respect in the vampire community, while I was always in the shadow, I was always the person who was just looking for the next trinket for the great collection, and uh, because of that, I, I want to get out of this. I want to I be better. I want to be better than my sire was, you know? Like, I want to take that role. Yeah, perfect. Let's do it. Uh, personality type. Clear-headed yet irrational. You're good at analyzing yourself, your own impulses and motivations, and why you do the things you do. You're not prone to having illusions about yourself. That doesn't mean you're rational. Quite the contrary. You're driven by emotion and random impulse. Unlike everybody else, you just don't lie to yourself about it. Okay. Hmm. Unformist yet criminal. You're not a rebel. You always dress the same as the people around you and follow their lead in terms of what to do and think. Yet you're also an incorrigible criminal. Breaking the law brings you pleasure. Interesting. Cowardly yet brave. You're often so afraid. Violence, the inherent dangers of a world that hides so much darkness. It's terrifying. Yet you know you can't allow fear to control you. You have your values, your beliefs, and you can't give up, give them up just because following them is so scary. You're brave despite how hard it is. I like this one. I think it also fits the character concept. I'm, I'm slowly building up in my head as I'm doing this. Critically, it's supportive. You see the flaws in everything. Plans, groups, ideologies all have their weaknesses that you point out. Yet when push comes to shove, you're there. When your friends need you, you support them, even if it costs. The fact that you criticize people, movements, and face even when nobody wants to hear you doesn't mean you don't want them to succeed. I like it. But also, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to be this overly critical character that just ruins the party for everyone. Um, even though I'm supportive and even though I'm there for them, I just constantly criticize everyone's actions. <laughs> I can see a vampire character like this. I'm not sure if I would be good at roleplaying this. Debonair yet crass. You're a suave urban individual, proud of your ability to bring a touch of class everywhere you go, whether a high society dinner or a sleazy strip joint. Yet when you lose your cool, when things get emotional, your face it drops. <laughs> Devious yet naive. You see yourself as a clever manipulator, able to steer the thoughts of everyone around you. Yet the idea that somebody might manipulate you just feels totally implausible. You'd see it coming, and why would they do it anyway? Disrespectful yet considerate. If there are norms of behavior, you think they need to be broken. I'm... no, I'm, I'm instantly skipping. <laughs> I don't want to... Learn. like, I know it's, it's great to somehow get outside of your comfort zone super far and try to uh, roleplay something like, like this, that is like, so completely different to you. Um, and for me, just like, I think it would be a little bit too far in the LARP setting, just because I would be too afraid to be <laughs> disrespectful towards other people. So uh, I try to pick more safe options for myself, as this is one of my first LARPs and I want to make the experience easier on me. Um, okay, eldest yet accessible, ba -ba, mm, frivolous yet serious, greedy yet generous, hedonistic yet meddlesome. In some ways you're extremely self-centered, you love the pleasures the world has to offer and try to experience as much of them, of them as you can. You're focused on the joyous on offer, but you also derive satisfaction from meddling in the affairs of others. Everybody's business is your business. If you can't manage someone else's life, what are you here for? Love this. Love it. I, I live for drama. <laughs> for the tea. <laughs> that would be so fun. Intense yet dreamy. Mm, yeah, this... no, no. Malicious yet loving. You're a cruel, thoughtless person. You enjoy making others squirm. <laughs> and get carried away with malicious ideas, especially against other groups of people you don't like. Yet often when you act against someone, you start to like them, even love them. You did so many strange social situations, but you always embrace them. Is that a tsundere type? <laughs> That's funny. Mendacious yet honest. You're a liar. Uh, morbid yet romantic. You're attracted to scenes of death and decay. Ooh! and tend to dwell on rotten tragedy. Such things make you feel safe, as if things fundamentally made sense. Yet you also believe in all the big romantic ideas. Love, finding a soulmate, 
I feel like I want to play a character who doesn't, but Saturnalia might change their mind. I think that would be pretty. Organized, yet sorted, you like things to be in order. With clear planning, everything is possible. Of course, in your case, it means all the corrupt, sordid hijinks your depraved mind can produce. If you're not as you rep repudiate the tedious pi pieties of respectability, it's all the more important to keep things straight. I see. Britannical yet provocative. I love these concepts. You don't understand why people feel so comfortable just giving in to their desires. Hard work, accomplishment, denying yourself. This is what it's all about. Despite your principles, you have a great talent for finding yourself in situations where they're in conflict. You feel an inexplicable need to go to places and meet people opposed to your worldview. Sometimes you provoke them, oftentimes you give in shamefully. <laughs> this is this is nice. I think like it fits the kind of like a stuck up neonate uh, thing. Secretive yet transparent. You love the aesthetics of secrecy. Hiding something for yourself that nobody knows gives you great pleasure. Yet you're a perfectly transparent person. You're a terrible liar and have a tendency to verbalize everything you think and feel. You love secrets but are terrible at keeping them. Mmm, I like it. It's fun. Steely yet superstitious. You're a strong-willed person who believes that giving up is never an option. It's not courage, just simple determination. At the same time, you see the world in magical terms. Everything can be a sign from the shape of the clouds to the words of a random stranger. You often base your decisions on arcane superstitions, then stick to them obstinately. <laughs> I love this! Well-meaning, yet ve venal. Ve venal. You genuinely want to help friends and strangers, yet somehow the poison always seeps out. You feel for those less fortunate than you and always seek to make their lives better, but you can't help seeing them as they are. Losers. <laughs> Who brought all of this misfortune over themselves. Love these. This, these are so well written. This is so fun. Ah, uh, Very difficult decision, but I feel what is something that's... Um, it's either coverly and brave spoke to me the most, and the other one that did was the. Um, this one was really nice. No, no, not this one. Wait, organize it, sort it. Britannical yet provocative is something like not giving in to your desires as a torator, I think, is a fun, like hard work, accomplishment, denying yourself. Yes, because my, my sire was the provocative, like lascivious type, you know, like very much just out there, just living the best torator life. And here I am, the child being just stiff as a stick. And trying not to like dwell into these desires, but yet I just provoke them because this flows in my blood. Love it. Okay, I'm going with this one. <laughs> this is great. Doom. Doom is how you will behave recklessly and endanger your character, exposing them to changes of stories and, and stories of conflict. Hoo-hoo! A grand gesture. You know the ideals you've decided to stand for are doomed, with no support and less enthusiasm, yet you know this is the hill you will die on. You feel you must make a grand gesture, becoming a martyr to your cause. Okay. Your war is determined by the quality of your enemies. If your enemies are weak, you're weak too. Hmm. Seek personal transformation at the risk of making enemies of your former friends and allies. Yes! If they denounce you, it means you have succeeded. This is interesting. This is like... I, I want to play against my sire. I want to be my own thing and I'm going to use Saturnalia to transform myself into the, the being I want to be and not who he wants me to be. That's something interesting. I like this. Care about something you hate uh, for their own good. You have determined that your friends are wrong and you need to get them to do something, to have something happen to them for their own good. Wow, that's dark. Hmm. Know your opponent, lose yourself, risk everything, spill all your secrets and trust the untrustworthy. I'm going to go with alienating transformation. I like this one. Okay, final steps. Now that you are the final steps of the character creation, please note the following. If this is the characters you're making with the create my character option as opposed to browse the character options, when you check out it is final. All the items you selected will be added to your account and owned. Nobody will be able to select the same items if there is a limited quantity, and you can't change anything. You will be able to save your character with a name of your choosing and save the character as a PDF by clicking the printer icon and saving to PDF. You can go back into the system and look at your character at any time. 
Your next actions for preparing for Saturnalia should be the following. Think of costuming for the event and what your character will wear. <laughs> I have some ideas already. Make connections with other participants, reach out to them in your group Discord channel, ask for connections in the general Saturnalia Discord channels and see, um, and see who is interested in being a rival, a friend or relationship. Construct a background for your character and a history. You can come up with a backstory based on what you selected and create a rich character. I love it. I feel like it's already rich. It's super rich. It's way more richer than most of my characters I've made beforehand at the you know first glance. Because um, I often like build up my characters during the roleplay. This is great. I want to proceed. Yes. Yay, my character. <gasps> do, 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 do. Is it locked? My name. Ah, uh, okay, so I need to update my name. I have not decided on the name of my character yet, and it will take me some time to decide. So with this in mind, I will finish this video. Thank you so much for taking this first part of the trip with me. I will be on my way to New Orleans this November to roleplay in the Saturnalia LARP. I really hope that you will meet my character uh, in there and we'll be able to roleplay together. And I will be bringing you more news from the LARP and hopefully take you on the other parts of the trip as well. Um, in the meantime, do not get lost in the night and see you in another time.